The impulse settings defines how many valid left and right impulses are required before the test stops automatically. Here you see 20 left head impulses and 20 right head impulses. To change the number of the suggested minimum head impulses for the current testing session, click the up and down arrows or type the number in directly. 20 has been recommended by Drs. Hamagi and Kurthois as the minimum number that should be collected for both left and right side. The elapsed time displays along with test date and test time at the bottom of the window. While performing the head impulse test, both the real-time trace window and the impulses window display head and eye traces to assist you in understanding the quality of data being collected. There are algorithms built into the system that will reject bad head impulses. While you are doing the head impulse testing, you will want to look at the real-time trace window and the impulse window. The real-time trace window allows you to monitor both head, which is displayed in three traces representing the three planes of the gyroscope. The three planes represent the lateral plane, the LARP plane, and the route plane for the head movements. The one in bold should move when performing the impulse type you selected. So if you chose lateral impulse, the lateral should be the bold one and that should be the tracing that's moving. If there's movement in the other two head traces, you may be stimulating those canals. So you want to make sure that the two traces that you did not select, so let's say you're doing a lateral test, that the LARP and RALP, they're not bold, and you want minimum movement in those two traces. In the lateral one that you did select, should be bold and that's where most of your movement should be when doing your head and pulse test. And then the eye movement is displayed in green. By monitoring the real-time trace you can make sure the patient is cooperating and staring at the fixation dot. Also notice the feedback system. This indicates that the head and pulse was good or bad. Green light is good, orange light is not good. If the head and pulse is poor the software indicates why. Down at the bottom it'll say whether it was too slow or too much overshoot. You also want to make sure there is minimum movement again in the planes that you are not testing. The impulse window helps you perform good head impulses. The gray training lines represent the shape of the good head impulses at a variety of velocities. And remember, the shape is different for lateral versus LARP versus RALP. So the shape changes based on the test type you chose. Positive velocities represent leftward head impulses and negative velocities represent rightward head impulses. The actual head and eye traces are superimposed on top of the gray training lines. The eye trace is always represented in green. White dots display along the y-axis to indicate the velocities of impulses collected. Remember, the sweet spot is 150 to 200 degrees per second. Comparing the actual traces against the training lines helps you ensure that the tester performs quality head impulses and that only good data is included in the analysis. The collection algorithm assures that only good head impulses are accepted for analysis. When performing the head impulse, you want to make sure it is randomized. Perform multiple velocities and randomized left and rightward movements. You want to make sure the patient cannot predict which direction and what velocity the head impulse will be performed. Touching the goggles or the goggle strap while moving the patient's head can result in moving the camera, which produces artifacts in the collection data. Again, it is important the goggles are strapped on tight and do not move during testing. Standing behind the patient, place your hands on the top of the patient's head well away from the goggles and the goggle strap. Ask the patient to stare at the fixation dot. For lateral head impulse, perform the head impulse by moving the head abruptly in a very quick motion like a kick. The tester should imagine a target point about 15 to 20 degrees to the right and left of the patient's head straight ahead of them. The tester should try to turn the patient's head so that the patient's nose is pointing at the imaginary spot moving it abruptly. Trying not to overshoot the 15 or 20 degrees and trying not to have a return. Just a quick direct head turn to that imagined target point. Hold it there for a few seconds and then slowly bring the head back to straight ahead or facing the wall. The key bit of feedback for the tester is that the movement should be precise. It should go up and come back to baseline with very little overshoot. Look at your head impulses and compare them to the training curves. The head impulses should be presented in an unpredictable manner and direction and at varying velocities. 
After each head impulse is performed, you should look at the impulse window and see if the head impulse you perform matches the training curves. Note how the head movement, the orange line, matches the gray training curve. Also note the white dot indicating the velocity at which it was performed and whether the head impulse was accepted or rejected. Again, if a poor head impulse is performed, look at the feedback system to see why the impulse was rejected. Was it too slow or did it have too much overshoot? You want to start with lateral head impulses if you've never done head impulses before. Perfect your lateral head impulses and then start doing LARP and RALP. LARP and RALP head impulses are a little more difficult and will be covered in a separate video. The system automatically stops when the minimum numbers for left and right impulses have been reached. To manually stop the test, click Stop, Data Collection is saved, or click Cancel, Data Collection is not saved. The data is automatically analyzed and displayed in the 2D analysis window. Let's look at some of my first head impulse results. Here you can see the differences in results from practice. These three sessions took about 10 to 15 minutes and by watching the training curves, instant improvement. Look at the head velocity in trial one, especially on the left side. They did not align well. Same in trial two, but in trial three, both the left and the right velocities align quite well. Now let's look at common mistakes. Here is an example of a head impulse that was performed too slowly. Notice that the tracing is broad. In the second example, the head impulse was performed at the correct speed, but the return was too quick. After performing the head impulse, you need to hold it there for a few seconds and then slowly bring the head back to straight ahead. Regarding analysis of the data, this video will not cover understanding head impulse analysis. I refer you back to the manual or to the analysis video. We want to make one more comment regarding data collection. The analysis algorithm evaluates the good head impulses and ensures that the patient was performing the task appropriately. For example, if the tester performs a good head impulse and that data is saved, but if the patient happened to blink or be looking around during the good head impulse, the analysis algorithm then discards this data as not being valid. Therefore, in the analysis section under the info tab, you see the data was collected as well as the data that was actually analyzed. You may find some of the collected data was not analyzed. There are two algorithms to assure that good data is collected. And if you need a little more help learning how to do head impulses, I suggest you watch the More Tips video.